Hello and welcome everybody. We all know that the most people in Abrahamic religion believe in the story of the creation. Some religious people may take this story as a metaphorical story, but almost all Muslim people believe in this story literally. Uh, in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah mentions the story of Adam and uh, Hawa, and Allah mentions the story of the creation. And we all know that the Quran mentions in half a dozen verses the entire story of the creation of Adam alayhi salam. I'm not a biologist, I'm a theologian, right? So I'm going to talk about this from a theological perspective, not from a, uh, a biologist perspective. That's not my speciality. As a theologian, as a scholar of Aqidah of the Quran and Sunnah, this is what I say. If somebody claims that all of the species of the world came from one proto-animal or one proto-mechanism, firstly, as long as they do not include human beings in that, that's the big caveat. Then theologically, I have nothing to say to this person. However, if they say mankind also connects to this chain, here is where I say, I'm sorry, I cannot agree. Why? Because the Quran is very explicit and the ahadith is even more explicit that Allah Azza wa Jal fashioned our father Adam with his two hands and that he breathed life into him. So there was no evolution of one species and then voila, Adam appears. No, it was literally overnight Adam comes out of Jannah into this earth. And Adam and his wife Hawa and Allah clearly says in the Quran, beginning of Surah An-Nisa, that from the two of them we spread forth multitudes of men and women. Why do Muslims fight against this theory? It's because it's a threat to his religion. That's why he does not have a problem with other theories that does not contradict his religion. But because the evolution is a threat to his religion, he has to prove that this theory is wrong and his religion and scripture is right. The scientific theory taught in the universities, if someone make a new scientific theory, it does not mean he his theory is correct even if he was a scientist. And the difference between a scientific theory and a scientific fact is that the scientific theory is the way we explain things around us. And the scientific facts are the result and the conclusion we found to be true. The tools to understand a scientific theory are the scientific paper that have been published in the scientific magazine. This paper explains how how the scientists came up with their results and conclusion. You cannot go to the university and find too many theories in the same domain competing with each other and they will not tell you to choose which one you want to study. This is just a nonsense and far out from the reality. As for the theory of evolution, it is the only theory that is taught in the universities and all other theories that you you heard from YouTube and website do not exist and they are just a conspiracy theorist because if not they will be teach in the universities that respect the science and the scientific community. Science wishes to take facts. Fact A, there's something called Cro-Magnon. Fact B, there's something called Homo sapiens, us. Fact C, our DNA and their DNA are 97% similar, I think, something like this, right? So, therefore, they must be our parents. Now, we can take the same facts, there's Cro-Magnon, there's humans, our DNA is the same, and we can say Allah created Cro-Magnon, Allah created Neanderthal, Allah created humans. And if the DNA worked well there, why not choose something better for us or similar for us? Why should Allah change the blueprint? Here is something to think about in this case. Imagine if the situation here is reversed. Muslim will tell you, what are you talking about? Universities do not teach this evolution theory. Are you insane? And you can see this in the way they use science to prove that the Quran is the word of God or so-called scientific miracle in the Quran. But because they are stuck in this scripture that contradicts clearly the scientific scientific method and all the universities in the world teach evolution theory even in the Islamic world. There are many thousands of Muslim scientists who teach the evolution theory. Rana Ad-Dajjani is a Muslim conservative.
conservative, wear hijab, and she is a professor in the biology said the evolution theory is a proven fact and not a theory anymore. Evolution, biological evolution in particular, is actually a fact. It has been proven by science uh, using the scientific methodology, using experiments and, and different forms of evidence that uh, throughout uh, history of, uh, of the Earth, uh, organisms have evolved from a very simple beginning to the complexity we see today and diversity we see today. And evolution is actually happening as we speak now uh, in different species and different places all over Earth. So it is a fact, it's not a theory, because usually a theory is something you test and you try, it may be correct, it may not be correct, until it is proven. All the universities and the schools around the world teach the evolution theory. And you as a Muslim, you cannot go to the university and tell the professor, no, I don't believe in the evolution theory I have a story on my own the story of the creation and Adam and Eve suppose that all the scientists of the world went out and told us that we were joking with you and that the theory of evolution is not correct nothing is going to change our belief that all the religions are a fiction and a myth this won't makes me get up in the morning and say oh my love oh messenger of God the only thing thing is going to change here is that we don't know how this happened and where this diversity came from it's like all the fossil and the bones stolen by devils and hidden somewhere all dinosaurs fossils and bones are plastic bones hidden in the soil and etc and etc to understand why evolution theory is a threat to the religion and especially who believe in the creation christian creationists and the most of the Islamic sect believe in direct creation. What do we mean by direct creation? It's B and it is. In the chapter 36 verse 82, the writer of the Quran states, all it takes when he will something to be is simply to say to it B and it is. This meant that God had nothing to do before and he was sitting. Then he decided to create all this diversity in nature one by one. Thousands if not millions of insects from different kind, bee and it is, mammals, bee and it is, bird, bee and it is, fish, bee and it is, tree, bee and it is, stars, B and it is, galaxies, B and it is. God made all this million of different species and all the matter and the space in the universe by telling them all one by one, B and it is until the flood of Noah came and drowned them all. Then he had no problem and nobody knows exactly how he did it all over again. Is it in the same manner or does he do some other magic thing? The only thing we understand here is that this God job only to sit and tell things be and it is. This is what we call direct creation and when you come to someone who believe in this fiction and tell him that we have an explanation to this diversity and the thing you see around you have evolved for millions of years. He will defend his belief by any means, otherwise his God is talking nonsense. For him, B and it is have to be a fact that cannot be challenged, because it is the word of his God and he believes that he is the creator of the universe and he cannot be mistaken. So when they came up with the fact that all the universities and the science scientific community were against them, they seek help from creationists and their old arguments against evolution theory, especially groups of them in the United States and some of them in the West and they are minority in Christianity and they are notoriously crazy. They have a museum in the United States that display human beings were created with other creatures as dinosaurs and you can see human play with dinosaurs and they believe in the flood of Noah and as well that earth was created 5000 years ago.
their job is only to put a stick in the wheel without providing answer to the questions when they tell you this is too complicated to come via evolution and it has to be designed by a designer they did not provide any explanation or benefit to humanity they just wanted to put a stick in the wheel in order to protect their belief with evolution we made a lot of impossible thing possible as for example the discovery of vaccines and medication only made possible by evolution as for the creationists what do they offer to humanity and what we benefit from them beside the museum that belong to the discovery institute in the united states is that you can go and see these beautiful models and have a good time the conclusion here is that the evolution is a fact we can see around us and the difference between the theory and the fact is that the theory is a tool to explain natural phenomena in order to come up with proven facts from this observation but muslim always try to mix between the facts and the theory in order to disprove a theory stood 150 years and the research that have been done about this theory is by hundreds of thousands so many books written about this theory and a lot of more published in the newspaper scientific magazine and in the social media tv documentaries and even in tv show and movies the fact and the matter is evolution is a fact even if you don't like it because your opinion don't matter if we have the tool to prove you wrong thank you guys for watching and see you again for another video